Hey Techies, Anthony from Hashtag here, and I'm going to take another look at the Xbox Broadcaster, and we're going to focus on three parts. None of them are too heady, so hopefully uh, you understand what I'm doing here. Uh, first, before you record or broadcast, you need to set up a scene. As you see on this scene, which is the live scene that I have here, there is nothing here. There is nothing in this scene. Now, you've got to decide what you want to be in this scene. Well, you can add a source. And you can do a whole bunch of things. You can capture your desktop. You can capture apps. As you see here, I have, of course, uh, my Discord. I have my web browser, Firefox. I have my notebook, which I keep notes on. OBS, which is recording this right now. The sound system and XSplit, which is this thing you're looking at right now. And actually, that is the folder in Explorer that I have open so I can see these recordings. So yeah, you can pick the desktops, um, and that's that's fine if you're just going to record your desktops. Now just remember, um, there's these things down here. You have to turn on your if you want your microphone to hear it. You just click this and hear it's on. And if you want to hear your computer sound, turn this on. But other than that, um, you can also choose game capture. It will detect it, and if it does detect it before you even get here, it'll be showing up in a list. So that is something you can do if you don't want to have to physically try to figure out what it is and add it yourself. So then camera capture cards, uh, XSplit VCAM. Uh, so if you're using VCAM, you can pull the picture in. Uh, animes, if you're doing virtual uh, avatar type of stuff. Droid cam, of course, if you're doing remote connections. Uh, your webcams, I have two attached to this computer and there they are. And then, um, of course, there's the Logic Capture, which is software for the webcams. Uh, I just use straight stream from the webcams. And then OBS again. So if I pull a image from the cameras of course here is uh, a image of some toys I have for sale on Mercari and I can adjust the image and there are little guiding lines here that'll tell you when you're at the screen or the quarter of the screen so this is quarter here's the full screen and then because I've added something I also get this option of using the uh, panel here to set properties. Uh, I can set the video and I can set the audio and if the camera I wanted to use the camera's audio I could set it. Uh, it's done individually. It's fine. Uh, you just have to remember if you're doing something like a capture card uh, you will have to set the audio individually so you can actually pick up its sound. And of course you can change the source in here. Uh, you can also adjust video inputs. You can adjust uh, video outputs. Now I um, have to put this out here. Uh, I don't know what is with these webcams, but uh, every single time I shut off the system, everything defaults back to this. So don't be surprised that you set these for 1080p or or if you have a 4K capable camera that they seem to revert back to their defaults. Uh, that's just the way the system works for whatever reason. So I just keep that in mind. So the next thing up, of course, you can just set bright, brightness, contrast, etc., etc., and um, as you see, it does actually do it in real time. And uh, then, of course, uh, let's see. Let's reset this stuff. And then you can set the screen's location. You can screen the screen size. Um, you, can, you can do pretty much anything you want with it. Uh, so there it is. And um, you, you want to make sure it stays the same. Um, aspect ratio no matter what you can set that you can lock its position you can enhance resize uh, I think it works more for pictures than it does video frankly but that's an option of course if you want to tweak the rotation of it uh, you can get this um, let's see if I click here and enlarge this you get this weird effect and um, oh also if you don't want to right click on it you can also use settings to get there but uh, it'll go to the last tab you have open and you get that weird effect. And you can also crop. Uh, so as you can see, I've cropped the bottom of the picture. Although, I'm going to reset everything. There you go. And uh, next up, of course, you want to do chroma key. You can. Uh, it'll instantly green out. But you can, of course, adjust it to whatever uh, color you choose. Uh, I started using blue recently uh, because I have green eyes. And when I was using my avatar, I would chroma key my uh, eye color out. So, you know, you can dis discrimination on it if you want it to be high, low, or whatever. Your, your call, um, I'm just going to turn that back off. And then, of course, uh, masking. I don't use 
I don't know anybody who does. Uh, source transition, if you want to transition to different uh, things between changing like this source to another. Um, this is more advanced and not really the nature of where I'm going to go into, but if you want to explore it, have at it. And then of course, uh, here's filtering and um, let's see. Uh, there we go. Old time movie. You know, back in the old days. I just kidding. But yeah, these, these are all things you can tweak. And um, I'm going to just take off the filter there. And uh, that, that's pretty much what you need to do to set up the scene. So once you have the scene set up, then you want to decide if you can have other scenes and you can create other scenes easily enough. Uh, and there is a transition you can set. So as you see, I transition with a nice fade out. And uh, this is the scene here animated for what I use for my avatar. Hence why you see uh, <laughs> the screen duplicating and also a blue screen because again, I have green eyes and I don't want the green to be you know grayed out. Uh, so uh, here is the transition options you have. You can do cloaks and fade to black and etc. I use just a generic fade. I think it's just tasteful enough. So, um, you know, that's what I use. Uh, you can set the timing on it. Uh, so right here, I have it for five. It's a half a second, by the way. Uh, so if you want to do more than that, I think 1,000 is a full second. Just transition from point A to point B. Uh, so that's, you can change that here. Uh, one more thing I want to mention about scenes is you can adjust this bar. Uh, I prefer like three three across for my scenes. I don't name them super long, so it's fine. And uh, so that's generally it for scening and transitions. Now we want to talk about multi-window. And that is simply going up here and uh, going into the split mode for the workplace. And what that does is it takes, this is your live feed. And you want to change it to live. And there we go. So we made the scene live, the live scene. And then if you want to go back and push animate it live, we'll go here and now animate is live. You want to do a test pattern? Hey, push live. Here we go. Test pattern is now live. So what does this allow you to do? Well, while this is live, you can't edit it. So don't mess with it. Uh, but what you can do over here is go into the preview, uh, which is now the live screen, and you can adjust it. Yeah, I need I need this to be something else. So I can screen you know this down. And funny thing is, if you do edit a screen while you're live streaming or recording, the changes will occur in, in real time. But if you want to keep it professional, you you do this preview thing, and then you make this adjustment. Oh, now I'm ready to go. I want this to be the live screen. So now the live screen is this and um, this is if you're doing a lot of stuff this is probably the good way to do it uh, it makes you look again more professional uh, but uh, otherwise here you go and of course if you want to transition back uh, you just click back to classic mode and your uh, whatever your last screen you're set on ends up being here and if you happen to be streaming or recording this becomes the active live sh screen so Again, uh, you have resolutions you can set. Uh, you can do custom ones. Uh, up to you to explore that. I don't know what type of setup you have. Uh, frame rate, of course, you can also set up customs there. I, I uh, never go above 60, but you can definitely get as high as you want. Uh, 244, I think, is the highest. I've never tested it, and I don't want to. And then, of course, um, we can default everything. We can scale the screen to 100. And we can change the screen to classic or dark. Uh, I prefer classic, so because um, I like the bottom bar to be lit. I just I don't know if it's easier for me to see or maybe it, I don't know. It's just, it's just a preference. Now let's say you've done all the scene work here as I've done, and you want to save it, and you also want to save the entire collection. Now this allows you to easily export and import the files. So what you do is, of course, you go to File, and you can save the entire presentation. And uh, as you see, I have saved a number of them. You simply type in the name, you hit Save Presentation Saved, voila. 
easy enough. Let's say you want to load a presentation. Then, of course, you click on load a presentation. And I'll ask you if you want to remove your current presentation. Uh, then you would select one in the dialog window, as you just saw. I obviously don't want to do that because then I, I don't know how recently I've saved. So I don't want to lose any of my work. And then, uh, of course, you go back into the window here. And let's say you want to save a scene. Well, you can, of course, whatever the active scene is, is what you're going to save. And you would, of course, save it. And then, of course, uh, that's it. And then, of course, loading it is the same thing. Load a scene. Now, the kicker is it will load over the scene you currently have open. I obviously don't want to load over live here uh, because it's my default loading scene because I don't want to bog down the system every single time the thing loads. So, um, but I could open up a file and replace it. My recommendation, of course, is go down and click the plus sign here to add a scene, scene 12. And then once you're on scene 12, which again, you can rename here just by changing the name, blog, blah, blog. And voila, the new scene is this. And then I would say, uh, you know, load whatever and it'll replace it name wise and it's fine. So you can also duplicate scenes, you can delete scenes. So we'll delete the scene and it's gone. And then we end up with my live stream scene and we we'll go back to my name scene here. So as you see, the screen list is back. And you can uh, also set new presentations up, which would, again, hopefully you've saved this before you do that, and a new scene. Um, this will, of course, add it to your list down below. It's the same thing as pushing the plus button. So just keep those in mind when you're looking to do more than just the starter scene. Tell me in the comments your thoughts in this video. Did you like what you saw, and how was your experience with it? Thanks for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.